Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. A man drove his vehicle straight into a home on the city's west side. We'll tell you what we know coming up on GMSA. A two-year-old is in the hospital with a gunshot to the head. Police are trying to figure out how this all happened. That story straight ahead. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 36 degrees to start your weekend. What is the rest of the weekend? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, February 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I got to say, yesterday, I tried to go on like a Friday walk. Helps me like decompress. Okay, okay for the record. Our viewers need to know that Max's steps that he gets every day when he tracks it on his phone, he looks and he's like, oh, I got 300 steps today. I was like, It's 300. very minimal. But it's tough for us because we got to go to bed early before the show, so we're waking up, we're rested. I get about, you know, my 10,000 every day, Max. I don't even know how to gauge that. But either way, Sarah Spivey, <laughs> it was gorgeous yesterday. It was, it was beautiful. It was very nice yesterday. And I thought of a solution, Max. Mm. Just walk in place. Okay, so you just... You need to get one of those if you, if you see, treadmills. Yeah, if you hear steps in between... <laughs> shots that's just me getting my steps in <laughs> sounds good and today's going to be a beautiful day too for a walk outside it is cold though out there this morning in fact many places are either at or below freezing let's take a look out there birdie stage airfield at 28 degrees 25 in comfort 26 in lotus 32 at jbsa randolph there uh, on the east uh, side of uh, san antonio 36 in canyon lake at the airport it's officially 34 but we'll probably dip to at least near freezing here in the next hour or so. A wider view. Notice how much warmer it is to the south. Catula, Beeville, Laredo, all in the mid 40s, mid to upper 40s. There are some clouds out there across parts of our southern viewing area, but the rest of us enjoying a clear morning. And because we're going to have very few clouds out there, plenty of sunshine, a dry atmosphere in place, we are going to warm up nicely. Expect a high temperature in the mid 60s this afternoon. Very nice. By tomorrow morning, I don't think we'll have a free but it'll still be chilly near 40 and tomorrow's going to be a few degrees warmer closer to 70. It'll be breezy and clouds are going to increase those clouds increasing a sign of moisture increasing, which is going to have a pretty big impact in our forecast in the coming week when we're going to feature highs in the 80s and highs in the 40s. I've got a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police responding to a family dispute that ended in a lot of damage. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Um, what have you been able to learn at this point? Good morning, Sarah. Well, information is limited at this time, but we do know a man drove his truck straight into a home in a neighborhood located on the city's west side. This was the scene earlier this morning, and it was a quiet morning on North Navidad Street near Commerce until this white pickup drove into this home. San Antonio police responding to the scene close to 4 o'clock this morning. They say a man, the driver of this pickup, was angry with his in-laws. Police say the man threatened the family, telling them that he would drive his truck into their home. The suspect driving straight through the fence and right into the house. Now, the suspect took off, but he was arrested just a, a few blocks down the road. Now, Max, are despite the damage, the good news here this morning is no injuries were reported. Police are telling us they did have to provide structural support to the home from preventing it from collapsing. Now, the suspect is pending charges. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, a shooting on the southeast side leaves a two-year-old shot in the head, and police are trying to determine what happened. The child was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. The shooting happened at a duplex on Dublin Avenue just before 8 o'clock last night. When officers arrived, they found the little girl wounded. We're told the little girl's mother and her boyfriend were home at the time of the shooting, but it's unclear how the toddler was shot. The mother is cooperating with police. Right now, police are looking for the boyfriend who took off before officers arrived. Well, dozens of parents are now voicing their concerns about Lee Crisp. Now, Crisp is the athletic director and head football coach at Medina Valley. These concerns come after the defenders confirmed a failed drug screening before Chris was promoted to those positions. Coach Crisp admitted to taking medication without a prescription in his application 
for those positions back in 2019. It's concerning because those same records show he had a commercial driver's license with a school bus endorsement. So sources say Crisp no longer drives athletes to and from events. Sources also tell our defenders that Coach Crisp was placed on leave after community members came forward but returned to work earlier this week. Parents want to know what the district has found in their investigation. They're still using that good old boy system that they've been using for years, and I think they're just, a lot of them are very close-minded. So parents have voiced other complaints against Chris as well, such as refusing to allow a football player to ride home with the team following a game in Lockhart back in October, and that he made fun of another player's list back at practices last fall. A district spokeswoman had previously referred to the complaints as rumors or unsubstantiated allegations. Another grass fire sparked last night. Firefighters were busy with this. A grass fire spread near I-35 in West Ansley on the city's southwest side. Flames burned brightly in the area while fire crews worked to put them out. Firefighters seemed to be able to gain some control over the fire as the flames died down around 9 o'clock last night. On well, your morning headlines, five administrators at Midland Christian School in Midland are facing charges for failing to report an incident with the intent to conceal, neglect, or abuse. The superintendent, the principal, vice principal, athletic director, and head baseball coach all arrested yesterday. And according to that arrest affidavit for all five faculty members, they were aware of a student athlete sexual assault in a locker room. Eight days later, Midland police were made aware of a possible incident at the school and just last week they interviewed the alleged victim in the arrest affidavit. Well, the report read that finding emails between the coaches, administrators and initial complaints that alleged the faculty members refused to report the alleged assault. U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy has tested positive for COVID-19. Murthy made the announcement himself on Twitter. He says his four-year-old daughter was the first to test positive for the virus a few days ago. He went on to write that his daughter is doing okay and her fever is improving. Murthy has also said his wife and five-year-old son are now positive and, like himself, have mild symptoms. Murthy using the announcement to, again, stress the importance of being vaccinated and boosted against the virus. All right, now to that tense situation between Russia and Ukraine. President Joe Biden hosting a short press conference yesterday saying that Russia has decided to invade. But what does this mean for diplomatic efforts? ABC Karina Mitchell has a story. President Joe Biden saying clearly and for the first time that Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to invade Ukraine. As of this moment, I'm convinced he's made the decision. We have reason to believe that. Though he left the door open for a diplomatic end to the crisis, the president telling the American people an attack on Ukraine is imminent. We have reason to believe the Russian forces are planning to uh, and intend to attack Ukraine in the coming week, in the coming days. We believe that they will target Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, a city of 2.8 million innocent people. Over in eastern Ukraine, Russian-controlled separatists conducting what appears to be a false flag operation in their own territory, a car exploding in their capital as they announce mass evacuations. The U.S. has been warning for weeks such an operation could be used as a pretext for Russia to launch an all-out attack on Ukraine. President Putin without evidence saying the situation is escalating. Now there are fears that Putin's estimated 150,000 troops at the Ukrainian border will invade under the pretext of protecting the Russian-speaking population there. Ukraine's government categorically denying any intention of launching an offensive. Meantime, people in Ukraine are getting ready. One gun club is seeing a 500 percent increase in members over the last three weeks. Ukraine's president is urging calm, and Putin says Russia is still open to more diplomacy. Russia has a choice between war and all the suffering it will bring or diplomacy that will make a future safer for everyone. Here at home, the Department of Homeland Security is urging governors across the U.S. as well as the private sector to take precautions in case of a Russian cyber attack. Officials say there aren't any specific or credible threats just yet, though. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Time now, 609, 36 degrees out. Well, the family that owns the opioid company blamed for the country's crisis is now offering more money to settle the case. We have those details. All right, let's rodeo San Antonio. New stamp paying ode to the Western way of life. We're going to show you four brand new stamps 
that fit right in with the rodeo. Have you been to any of the rodeo events? No, I haven't. Those stamps look super, super cute. Excited for that story. Yeah. All right, taking a look outside with live cam, 36 degrees, a very chilly start for me if you're walk if you're me and you're Did walking. Did you uh, go full fuzzy outfit? Um, no, but I went and I started my car early. To oh, get the smart. Going. Yeah, you might have to do that if you're planning to head out this morning. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. So you haven't been out to the rodeo once? I mean, I've gone out to cover some stories. Okay, that counts. I, I haven't gone for like funsies yet. That's fair. Yeah. My uh, my friend went to see Ludacris the other day. She said it was a great show. Luda. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is Anna Turner's show and rodeo. Still going on out at the AT&T Center and Freeman Coliseum. For details of what is going on each and every day, we have all those answers. So, yes, you can just go to ksat.com or you can expedite that process. Take out the phone, or unless you forgot your phone at home, take your, out your phone, scan the QR code on the camera right there. It'll send you right there. Gates open 8 a.m. every day. And if you haven't been out there yet, rodeo still has a little more than a week to go. It ends February 27th. All right, talk about perfect timing. The United States Postal Service held a big unveiling of its Western wear theme stamps this weekend at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The four stamps feature a cowboy hat, a pair of boots, Western shirt, and a belt buckle. The artist behind the stamps is Ryan Freer, who was born and raised in Texas and is a professor at Abilene Christian University. He says, to his knowledge, the Postal Service releases 30 stamps a year, and for him to have designed four of them is a dream for any designer. And I'm thrilled. It's, it's a huge honor, and um, the USPS has been super kind. I, I just feel super blessed. Part of the big unveiling, the first 1,000 people Ooh. who buy a book of the Western Wear theme stamps will receive a free lapel pin. They can choose one of the four pins that showcase the same design as those stamps. All right, Sarah Spivey, have you been out to the Stock Show Rodeo yet? You know, I haven't. <laughs> I have not, but the weather has been pretty great for the Stock Show and Rodeo. You know, we've had a couple of cold days mixed in there, but generally really nice. And it is cold this morning. You're going to need that heavier coat if you have early Saturday morning plans. I mean, it's 27 in Holotus, 32 at Rio Medina, freezing at JBSA Randolph, and it's just about freezing at the airport. It's 34 degrees. I fully expect that as we uh, head into the next hour or so, temperatures will drop a degree or two will be awfully close to freezing here in San Antonio for our morning low 28 at Bernie Stage Airfield 27 in Kerrville 25 in Comfort and a wider view here 41 in Del Rio 39 in Gonzales 33 in New Braunfels 33 in Hondo and as I mentioned earlier take a look at to the south it's quite a bit warmer it's 20 degrees warmer in Catula than it is in Kerrville this morning and the big reason for that there's some cirrus clouds south of Highway 90 and we could have some wispy cirrus clouds out there today, but generally we're going to have enough sunshine to warm up really quickly in San Antonio. Uh, as you can see, this is a look at around 10 a.m. We could have some of those cirrus clouds around San Antonio and those clouds will increase in the overnight hours for sure for us, but it's going to be a beautiful day. High temperature in the mid to upper 60s, 66 in New Braunfels, 66 in Kerrville, 71 for Del Rio, the high temperature out there toward Del Rio, 69 in Cachula, 68 in Beeville and 65 here in San Antonio. So here's a look at today's forecast for you. Cool for the first part of the day here. 51 at 10, 59 at noon, mostly sunny, pleasant 65 degrees. East winds today, fairly light, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 626 and grab that jacket and coat. If you have Saturday night plans, maybe you're going to go to the rodeo and uh, know that it's going to get chilly very quickly as soon as the sun sets. We'll be already in the 40s shortly after 10 p.m. All right, it is very quiet across the United States. There really is only some snow that's working its way across uh, parts of uh, New York and New England. That's going to be the big weather maker today for them and across the nation. Meanwhile, a high pressure system across uh, parts of the Mississippi River Valley. This is going to bring us an increase in Gulf moisture through uh, tomorrow and through Monday. So tomorrow you won't really feel the moisture out there. Uh, there is going to be a little bit more cloudiness out there, but through tomorrow dew points will be comfortable in the 40s and by the evening in the 50s, but by Monday morning, dew points will be close to 60 degrees. 60 degrees is when you start to feel the humidity, and I think by Monday morning we'll see it too in the form of some patchy drizzle and some fog by Monday morning. So that's the first change to talk about. 
The next change, a significant warm up. By Monday afternoon, we're going to be in the 80s in San Antonio. And we're going to be in the 80s Monday and Tuesday, but it's not going to stay warm for long. In fact, a cold front is expected by Wednesday morning, and this cold front is going to drop our highs from the potentially mid 80s all the way into the 40s for both Wednesday, Thursday, and and Friday rather Thursday and Friday. We're going to be seeing temperatures uh, in the 40s on Wednesday and Thursday. As far as rain chances go, there is going to be a steady chance for light rain uh, pretty much Tuesday night through Thursday. But the thing is, the rain is going to be light if it does happen, and it's not going to put a dent in the drought by any means. So looking at the forecast, the biggest thing I think is the big change in temperatures from Tuesday to Wednesday when we'll be in the 80s and then by Wednesday we'll be in the 40s for highs. A light freeze is possible on Thursday and you know what I do want to just say this uh, early on Wednesday and Thursday I think there could be some potentially in the hill country some light sleet mixed in with the cold rain but no impacts would be expected just kind of a wow factor but again that's mainly going to be in the hill country Wednesday and Thursday we'll, we'll keep you posted. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 619, 37 degrees out. Well, a new settlement proposal in the bankruptcy case involving the opioid drug maker Purdue Pharma. How much more the family owners are now offering to settle the case? And it is Saturday, Sarah, so what does that mean? What does it mean, Max? It means it looks like we're going to be talking about brisket. We're definitely going to talk about Texas Eats. Oh, I could start off with a brisket sandwich. We're going to have a full preview coming up. David Elder is going to be joining us with more places for us to explore and enjoy some good food. It, you know, it's always tough with these. We're going to give you a preview of Texas Seats, but it's always tough because we're always so hungry. It's awful. All right, so here's that preview, promised. We're inside the kitchen and we're being joined by executive chef Matthew Poussin, and you're going to be showing us how to make the pastrami and Swiss sandwich that we have on the menu out here. This is definitely our showcase item. Well, we're going to start with our rye bread. We'll get our pastrami. We go through six briskets a day. Oh this is our house-made sauerkraut. Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited, man. This looks absolutely delicious, y'all. There's a lot more stuff on the menu that you're gonna be cooking up. I mean, we gotta try it all. Oh yeah. We gotta try everything. Joining me now is Adam Lampenstein. He's the owner operator out here at the Hayden. We have a big spread of food in front of us. I mean, this is a lot of food. The Texas diner, that's what we call it. That's how we do it, that's how we do it. And uh, right in front of me right here, we just saw it get made in the kitchen. This is the pastrami Swiss sandwich. You got the potato salad on the side. I gotta take a bite out of this. I mean, toasted on the outside, gooey in the middle right there, the sauerkraut, this is where it's at. Okay, I've had the pastrami sandwich. Good, two thumbs up. So good. All right. I want it right now. <laughs> there you go. 624, 37 degrees south. So Congress has confirmed the head of the FDA, and it turns out he's no stranger to the job. That story coming up next. The family that owns Purdue Pharma is now offering an additional $1.6 billion in effort to settle the company's 2019 bankruptcy case. The additional money is on top of the $4 billion the Sackler family previously proposed. According to court documents filed Friday, all the money would be used to support survivors and victims of opioid addiction. Sackler's company is the maker of Oxycontin and the drug at the root of the opioid crisis that has been linked to more than 500,000 deaths in the U.S. Not all parties have agreed at the new settlement number. All right, so after a narrow vote by Congress, Dr. Robert Califf has been confirmed as the new commissioner of the FDA for a second time. So he was approved by the Senate in a narrow 50 to 46 vote. Six Republicans voted for him. Five Democrats voted against, including Senator Joe Manchin, who said Califf is too tied to the pharma industry. So Califf, a cardiologist, he had already headed the agency once before during the Obama administration with much less opposition. Time now, 628, 37 degrees out. Just ahead on GMSA, how science plays a part in matching men and women with their best furry friends. And back here at home, tired of thieves stealing their 
hard work? Well, some property owners on the west side, they are taking it to the court of public opinion. We're gonna explain in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 6.32 this morning, February 19th. I gotta tell you, we are starting off that it feels like February, 37 degrees. I know. I. So I've been doing this thing where I'm trying to get more sun. Okay. <laughs> so look to the mirror is like, I look like I haven't gotten sun. Are you taking off the big hat? I always have the hat on and okay. sunscreen, but so it, but it was sunny enough, Sarah. It was like mm -hmm. 60 in in the like low 60s, and I was yeah. able to sit in my backyard and get a little bit of sun and feel comfortable. It was beautiful yesterday, but it did start off cold yesterday and it's starting off cold this morning too. Many areas are at or below freezing. Take a look at temperatures out there this morning. While it's 34 degrees at the airport, it is below freezing at JBSA Randolph. It's in the 20s in Helotus, 25 in Comfort and 27 in Kerrville. Let's take a look at the radar real quick because I do want to show you that as you look to the south and to the west, there are some very light returns on the radar. Uh, most of this is is likely just some cloud cover that the radar is picking up on to our south and to our west, but there could be a few sprinkles for Southern Maverick County. We're not anticipating any, anything like that here in San Antonio today. It should be a nice and mostly sunny day. Hey, if you're planning on going out to the rodeo, we've been talking about it this morning. Just know that it's going to be sunny uh, in the afternoon. Uh, there will be some cirrus clouds out there, but we'll be looking at a high temperature in the mid 60s. So we'll be close to 60 at noon and about 64 65 for the afternoon high east winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. The big story in the week ahead is temperature swings. We're going to get up into the 80s for a couple of days and then a strong cold front will move through dropping our temperatures into the 40s. But what about rain chances? I'll have a look at that coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an explosion at the Bear County Jail overnight. Fortunately, no injuries reported. So according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, crews were welding together what was a gas leak, and that's when there was a reaction from the welding. It caused the loud pop. Now, there were minimal flames, three inmates and one employee. They were in the vicinity at the time of the explosion. Luckily, no one was hurt. Out of precaution, the gas was shut off until there are no longer any signs of a leak. Shopping center businesses have had enough of vandals and thieves. Two centers on the west side have been targeted over the last few weeks. As police investigate, tenants tell John Paul Barajas they also want their councilwoman to help stop the thieves. Just stop. It's killing my business. So I've had graffiti. I've had vandalism on my vans. I've had vagrants that decide to want to urinate at my front door. These two men say a series of small crimes are costing them thousands of dollars. They work at separate West Side shopping centers, but face similar issues. The most recent break in happening Monday at the shopping center off General McMullen in Calabria. The owner there asked to remain anonymous. There's supposed to be an AC unit in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> there is. It's all gone. The, the guy cannibalized it, and I'm sure he, he walks, so he just takes what he can. He'll take the aluminum, take the copper. According to the owner, it's been happening for about a year. He says one man continues to pop up on their cameras, but you can't see his face. Adding the man smashed the front door of this restaurant and has forced his way into pretty much all of their storage units. There's lots of remnants of locks that we replaced over the months. There's one right there. There's another remnant there. There's another another piece here. Top part right there. So he just goes to town. There's another lock there. He actually, I don't know, he got a crowbar so and broke all that off, so. There's not much of value in the units, the owner explained but replacing the locks does add up. Five, $6,000, I'm sure that our front door was $350. And just two miles away, a shopping center off South Sarzamora and West Commerce had $40 worth of copper stripped from electrical lines, in turn killing power to the entire strip. Someone cut through a chain link fence to do it, according to Cano Health Regional Director, Rafael Pena. So 40 costed me thousands. <laughs> Figure the math on that. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. All right, so the South San Antonio Chamber of Commerce revealing a new name and a new brand. So we know this pandemic, it has hit small businesses around the country, around Texas, and around Bear County so hard. So two years later, how are we doing? 
So that is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Connie Gonzalez, the chair of the South Texas Business Partnership, she's joining us live. We're set to talk about the new brand, the business ad admi administration and the atmosphere, and what the future of small business looks like from their perspective. If you have any questions you would like to submit, you can do that right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. A group of Arizona officers jumping into danger to, to protect their community. So check this out. These officers helping rescue two young girls from an apartment fire and it was all caught on body cam video. In all, four police officers helping make the rescue together. They represent 44 and a half years of law enforcement experience, which ended up being just enough to save these two young girls, a six year old and a two year old. The officers were just up the street. They answered the call to rush over. They saw a man scaling the front of the burning building to get to a window. But another officer went to the back after learning someone was inside. I tried to listen. I thought we could hear a child, um, but we thought it might be coming from the next door apartment. So a man approached saying which apartment the six year old and two year old girls were in. Then there was video of them throwing rocks. The officer then threw rocks to break the window. One of those officers hopped into the window, started pulling away the frame to get inside. Another officer jumped on top of a shed. It is an amazing rescue and they saved these two young girls lives. So thank you to those officers. Look at that, literally pulling them from the fire, going in and out of the window. Amazing, amazing work. Wow. Yeah, it's a crazy video. All right, 638, 37 degrees out. Max, one of my favorite players of all time is back in the spotlight. Oh, why is that? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Manu Ginobili set to receive another honor. We're going to explain and why I personally think, oh, that is just an iconic Oh, block. that one. That was, that, that, that was the block. I remember watching that in my living room. We're going to explain it just a bit. All right, and a new way to get matched with your forever furry friend oh. after the break. We're talking compatibility. Oh, now I get it. Yeah. When I first read the tease, I thought it was compatibility, and I was like, interesting. Either way, you're taking a live <laughs> look out there. 37 degrees. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. All right, it's that time of year when love is in the air. Can you remember back to what drew you to that special someone? Was it their energy, their smile, or even their adorable face? And did you find each other in person or did you oh. swipe right to virtually meet your match? RJ Marquez takes a look at an innovative service that links people with their perfect furry fit. Is it chemistry? So she's pretty attractive. <laughs> They're just very cuddly. Or personality. The traits that create a great partnership can also help match a person to the perfect pet. The assessing is the magic. That's, that's really our secret sauce. You're a baby. You're such a baby. Jody Anderson is an expert in dog behavior and co-founder of How I Met My Dog. It's an online site that matches shelter dogs and dogs that need to be rehomed with people who are ready to adopt. Shelter workers fill out an online survey that details the pet's personality. Adoptees answer a survey of 56 questions based on three categories. So pet is really the categories that we match on, and P stands for personality. Expectations is the E, and the T is training style. A complex computer algorithm matches the pets and their potential humans. The Calvis family had three kids, a cat named Frank Sinatra and a golden labradoodle, Tybee. But two years ago, Frank died and Tybee got sick. All of a sudden, the house felt very empty. The family filled out a How I Met My Dog survey and matched with Casper, a Jack Russell mix they admit they never would have picked at first sight. It makes us laugh all the time, and we need that, actually. <laughs> and in what Anderson calls the next logical step, they've launched a companion site called Compatibility. Compatibility offers customized tips for improving current pet relationships based on your personality and your dogs, too. It's marriage therapy. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. How I Met My Dog, what a name there, works with over 400 shelters in 39 states. They do not match people with dogs from breeders or pet shops, and there is no charge for the matching service or the new advice website. RG Marquez, KSAT 12 News. When Scooby, my... Um, you have two dogs. I have two dogs. They're both adopted, but Scooby was my first. He literally walked in, I was doing a news segment mm -hmm. on adopting pets, and he walked in and just put his head on me. He's like, Aww. you're taking me home, right? I was like, okay, Aww, you're mine my now. Gosh, <laughs> I so love cute. that story. Oh, Scooby and sister, they're good dogs, aren't they? They're sir? my angels.
Scooby's on the couch watching right now, Sarah. Hi, so give him a good forecast. <laughs> I'm gonna say hi to Nora too, my cat. Hey, Nora. She's hey. probably not watching. It. <laughs> okay, outside right now we're seeing the first light of the day. Some cirrus clouds out there as well, and it's cold. It's 34 degrees. Winds are from the northwest in San Antonio at seven miles per hour. So that actually gives us a wind chill. It feels like it's in the upper 20s. So don't be caught without that jacket this morning. You're gonna want it. Take a look at temperatures in the satellite image uh, around KSAT 12 viewing area. Much colder in the hill country, 25 in Kerrville, 24 in Fredericksburg, 24 in Austin. Well below freezing in, in these areas north of San Antonio. They've had completely clear skies, been able to cool down. But then look at Creza Springs, 41, 48 in Catula, near 40 in Pleasanton. There is uh, cirrus clouds to our south. That's kind of acting as a blanket and keeping those areas south of San Antonio a little bit warmer. And we're, we can see some clouds out there near Del Rio too, where it's in the 40s. And, and as I mentioned, even though winds are calmer than yesterday, there's still a bit of a breeze out there. And so because of that, it feels like it's 26 in New Braunfels. It feels like it's 29 in Hondo. It feels like it's 28 here in San Antonio. Definitely a cold start out there, but you won't need the jacket for long because we're going to see tons of sunshine, a dry atmosphere, a few cirrus clouds that were south are going to move north throughout the day today. And so the sky might have have a bit of a milky hue to it every now and then from those high thin cirrus clouds, but otherwise quick warm up we will already be in the 50s by 10 at noon we will be near 60 degrees and 65 for the high temperature today. A beautiful Saturday in store for us. Once the sun sets at 626, we're going to see temperatures drop and by midnight we'll be back in the 40s. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I do not anticipate a freeze tomorrow morning. All right, we've got dry air in place. Dew points are in the 20s. That is very, very dry air. That's why we're able to warm up quickly. That's why you need the hand lotion, the chapstick. It's very dry, but watch what happens starting tomorrow. Now, the day tomorrow will feel nice and comfortable. We're not going to notice the increase in humidity, but throughout the day tomorrow, humidity is going to increase so that by Monday morning, dew points are going to be near 60 degrees, which is very muggy. And you'll notice that by Monday morning in the form of drizzle and patchy fog as well. So that's the first big change that's on our doorstep is that the humidity is going to increase by Monday. But you know, it's also going to increase Monday temperatures. We're going to be in the low 80s, both Monday and Tuesday, a big jump in temperatures, some 15 degrees above the seasonable average high temperature of 68. And then that front is going to move through Wednesday morning and Wednesday and Thursday. Our high temperatures are going to be in the 40s. So a 40 degree drop from Tuesday to Wednesday because of a fairly potent cold front. Now, it is not going to bring us a good chance for widespread soaking rains. Instead, what we're going to see is Wednesday and Thursday, some light showers are entirely possible. And uh, with those light rain showers up in the northern part of the hill country, there could actually be some sleet pellets mixed in with that light rain. But Something to keep in mind is that there would be no impacts from that if that does happen. No major impacts at all. Uh, so the biggest impact to you at home this week is going to be a big drop in temperatures from Tuesday to Wednesday. You're going to have to work your way through that closet this uh, week because you'll need the jackets and the t-shirts. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 37 degrees at home. Er, Manu! I really miss saying that watching. No play. one's stopping you from saying it. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a Manu jersey? Yes. Of course you do. All right. Well, number 20 on the court, number one in our hearts. Big step. That's the play right That's there. That's the play. It's so Him blocking Harden. So now a sixer Harden. Uh, will he be inducted to the Hall of Fame? We're going to explain it in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs go, a special go Spurs go this morning because there's a major announcement. It has people, including members of the Spurs family, congratulating four-time NBA champion and Olympic gold medalist Manu Ginobili. He is now officially a finalist for the Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2022. Manu. So that announcement made yesterday during All-Star Weekend in Cleveland. The Honors Committee will give final approval during the Final Four in April. Now, Manu, no-brainer as far as the Spurs and the international basketball community are concerned. He obviously helped the Spurs win four NBA titles, 03, 05, 07, and of course, 
2014, taking down LeBron in the heat. After the Spurs made him a second round draft pick, 1999, he brought the Euro step to the NBA after winning a Euro League championship and later leading Argentina to a gold medal in the 04 Olympics for his contributions to the silver and black. His number 20 jersey, it is already hanging in the rafters of the AT&T Center. This latest recognition being a Hall of Fame finalist in his first year of eligibility, it is just one more step in a truly impressive international career. Manu, uh, you know, obviously an iconic uh, game changer, so to speak. You know, the Euro step, you know, he brought it over here and uh, his competitiveness, his winning ways uh, have been heralded for a long time. And uh, it's, it's thrilling to see him be rewarded. I've been trying the Euro stuff for 30 years, still not working. All right, Manu, not the only former Spur to be on the short list. Former Spur George Carl, also a finalist for the Basketball Hall of Fame. You may remember Carl. He suited up for the Silver and Black starting in 1973 when they were in the ABA. He played until his retirement in 1978. Then he was an assistant coach for the Spurs before becoming a head coach in the NBA for the Cleveland Cavaliers in 1984. He was also the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Supersonics. You know what? It doesn't matter. They're not a real team anymore. They didn't even win a championship. If you watch the MJ documentary, you know the glove. The Bucks, the Nuggets, and the Kings. He has 1,175 wins. That is sixth all-time regular season coaching Ws. Unfortunately, Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond not voted in as a finalist for the Hall of Fame with Manu and George Carl. Despite the fact Hammond was a six-time WNBA All-Star, 16-year WNBA career, included eight seasons with the San Antonio Stars before her retirement in 2014. She was voted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame just a few days ago. Last year, Hammond was named as one of the WNBA's 25 greatest and most influential players finishing her career with more than 3,000 points and 800 assists. So there you go. I gotta say, the, the newer WNBA jerseys, these two, they're really cool. Well, congratulations to everyone. There you and go. Becky Hammond. She's great. Hall of Fame in my book. There you go. 654, 37 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police are responding to a family dispute that's ended with a whole lot of damage. Right now we know a man drove his pickup truck into this home right here on the city's west side. And it was a quiet morning on the 100 block of North Navidad Street until this white pickup drove into this home. San Antonio police responding to the scene close to four o'clock this morning. They say a man, the driver of the pickup, was angry with his in-laws. Police say the man threatened the family, telling them that he would drive his truck into their home, the suspect driving straight through their fence and right into their house. The suspect took off but was arrested just a few blocks down the road. Now, despite the damage, the good news here this morning, no injuries were reported. Now, police are telling us they did have to install structural support to keep the home from collapsing. The suspect is pending charges. Reporting from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Although it's not technically freezing at the airport, it's 35 degrees. There are plenty of spots around San Antonio that are either at or below freezing. JBSA Randolph at 32. It's 28 at Bernie Stage uh, Airfield, 27 in Lotus, 31 in Rio Medina and 32 in Hondo. And as we've been saying all morning, in spite of the cold start, we're really going to warm up nicely today. 65 sunny degrees out there tomorrow morning above freezing 40 degrees, still chilly. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, it'll be breezy as clouds and increase and winds will uh, be from the south gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. High temperature near 70 on Sunday, but it's going to be even warmer Monday and Tuesday. Our highs are going to be in the 80s and then a cold front is going to move through and knock those temperatures down. The maximum temperatures down into the 40s. Chances for rain Wednesday and Thursday, but really nothing to put a dent in the drought for us. Uh, Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Also, a quick update to what we were just talking about with the George Carl and the Supersonics. They did win a championship 1979. All right. Well, I'm sure everyone was checking. You know, it's someone did bring it up on social media, so I wanted to make that known. But we're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. Don't go anywhere, though. We have a jam packed show coming up at 8 a.m. That's right. So, um, San Pedro Creek, you know, the renovations opened in Beautiful. 2018. Well, the rest of them are parts of them are opening later, and our Jonathan Colt will be live out there later this morning. All right. See you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now.
A suspect driving his truck into a west side home. What police believe the reason behind the crash coming up in just a few moments. Plus, Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. If you're looking for a place to go outside and have some family fun, look no further. The construction at the San Pedro Creek is now complete. We'll tell you everything you need to know coming up on GMSA. Taking a look outside with live cam 37 degrees, a chilly start this morning. Will things shape up to be a beautiful Saturday? Sarah Spivey will let us know in just a bit. All right, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, February 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Not a cloud out in the sky. The sunrise was gorgeous, but Beautiful. it is cold. Yeah, I want to say brutally cold because anything okay. under like 50. 50 is the line of demarcation um, I for mean, us. I really mean like 65. Cause, um, <laughs> but Sarah, yesterday the sun came out and if you were in the sun, it, it felt nice. And you it's, know? it's going to be that way today, guys, too. There are a few clouds out there, especially to the east and to the south, uh, but it is going to be a great day with mostly sunny skies. It is cold though out there this morning. So bundle up if you have early Saturday morning chores that you need to knock out. Take a look outside with temperatures right now below freezing up in the hill country. It's 29 in Kerrville. 27 in Fredericksburg, it's 30 in Austin, but in New Braunfels, it's 34 degrees, 34 in Hondo, 35 here in San Antonio, and temperatures are really only going to go up from here as we've seen the sunrise and the thermometers will rise soon too. Notice that it's quite a bit warmer, but still chilly in uh, Carrizo Springs and Catula as well as in Pleasanton, temperatures in the 40s. That's because there was some cloud cover in the overnight hours, allowing for them to be a little bit warmer under the blanket of those clouds, but as I mentioned, it's going to end up being a beautiful day today. Very nice 65 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow we will see increasing clouds after a chilly start and it will be breezy. Winds will be from the uh, south at about 20, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Not as windy as the last couple of days, but definitely noticeable. And then the week ahead, gonna feature a temperature roller coaster. So let me take you up and down that roller coaster tomorrow. 68 degrees for the high as I just mentioned. By Monday and Tuesday though, we're actually gonna be in the 80s and we won't stay there for long because a cold front by Wednesday morning is going to drop our temperatures fairly drastically. And by Wednesday and Thursday, our highs will only be in the 40s. But hey, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about uh, whether or not there's any rain chances with that front. Small chance, but we'll, we'll talk details coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police believe a man made good on his threats, and that man is now facing charges. Take a look. Around 345 this morning, police say a man drove his truck through a home on North Navidad Street near, nor near Perez. Now, we're told he tried to run away. Officers caught him just a few blocks down the road. Luckily, no one injured in the crash, but officers had to brace the structure because it was en route to a collapsing. A police on the scene telling us that man had allegedly made threats to drive the vehicle into his in-laws home because he was upset with them. Charges are now pending. Top stories we're following this morning. A lot of questions still unanswered in a shooting on the southeast side last night that left a two year old girl with a gunshot wound to her head. At last check, she had been taken to University Hospital in critical condition. This all happened just before eight o'clock last night. Officers responded to a shooting at a duplex on Dublin Avenue. When they got there, they found the injured toddler. The little girl's mother and her boyfriend were home at the time of the shooting. But it's unclear exactly what happened. The mother is cooperating with police. Her boyfriend, however, took off before officers arrived and police are still looking for him. All right, turning now to the latest COVID numbers in and around our community. In Bear County last night, Metro Health reported 280 new cases. 11 more people died due to COVID. Now, our seven day average now at 572 new positive cases. Hospitalizations are going down, though. 532 patients related to COVID are in the hospital, 137 of them in the ICU, 77 of them are on ventilators. And you can still do your part in the fight against COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. Happening today, Metro Health will be hosting a pop-up clinic at McNair Middle School, Pearsall Road in Atascosa. It'll be in the gym from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All three COVID-19 vaccines will be available for eligible adults and children. You can also get your flu shot if you like. 
All right, also happening today, if you have any household hazardous waste you need to get rid of properly, Solid Waste Management is hosting an event where you can do exactly that. From now until noon, you can dispose of any paint, oil, chemicals, pesticides, batteries, and electronics at the Bulky Waste Collection Center right off of Rigsby Avenue on the city's east side. You do have to bring a valid ID and a copy of your most recent CPS energy bill. All right, if you're hoping to get out of the house on the weekends more often and searching for outdoorsy spaces or things to do, look no further. We have the answer. That's right. Construction at the historic San Pedro Springs Park. It's been happening for a while and it's finally complete. And our Jonathan Goto joins us live from San Pedro Springs Park with details on what you can expect. Good morning, Jonathan. How's it looking out there? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. The park is beautiful. The sun is out. It's in my eye, but it's out. It's keeping us warm this morning. And what a better place to, to be at than this beautiful park. I'm learning this morning that the San Pedro Creek Park is the second oldest in the country. So I'm so happy to be here this morning and sharing with everyone, our viewers at home, this beautiful park. And to learn a little bit more of what's taking place here this morning, marketing manager for the San Antonio Parks and Recreation, Connie Swan. Good morning, Connie. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. I'm glad you're out. So I'm already seeing folks out here with their dogs hitting the trails, enjoying this beautiful space. I'm seeing the number of trees that are planted here. And in fact, we're standing in a green open space that didn't used to be this way, correct? That's right. This used to be a ball field. And with the recent improvements to this bond project, we've converted it into a beautiful green space. So we encourage people to come out, bring their picnics, bring their lawn chairs, their friends and family, and come and enjoy a day in the park. Now. Uh, more access to the pool. Talk to me a little bit about the planning. I know this all started and went underway in 2017. What does that effort look like throughout the years? So this was a voter approved bond project from 2017. This was um, a significant project that, like you mentioned, this isn't one of our oldest parks in San Antonio, the oldest park in San Antonio. And so a lot of generations of families and community have enjoyed this park. And so these renovations were great. Now we have new spaces for people to enjoy the walking trail for people to walk their dogs, running. We've seen people already out here this morning, even though it's a little chilly, and just more access to the park. Well, thank you so much, Connie. Sarah, you can bring your pups out here. I just have a 10-week-old puppy. I'm going to be walking them out here. It's a beautiful space, a beautiful place to be. We're going to tell you what's coming up later today in the next half hour. You don't want to miss out. There's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of action happening here later this morning. Back to you, Max and Sarah. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. 8.07, 36 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA. Manu! There you go. <laughs> you should have worn your number 20 jersey today. I know. All right, we're going to tell you about a big honor for the former Spur, Manu Ginobili, what Coach Pop has to say about him being named as a finalist for the Basketball Hall of Fame. Plus, if you didn't know this, Monday is a holiday. That means deals the stores. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at which retailers are offering the best discounts for President's Day. All right, and if you do want to head out to the park today, you want to bring a jacket to start the morning. 36 right now, so when will we see those temps rise? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. For those of you who don't know, Monday is a federal holiday. It's President's Day, and somehow the holiday is slowly becoming a huge day for deals. Interesting. So if you're looking to save a little money on some of your favorite items, RJ Marquez takes a look at which retailers are offering the best discounts. President's Day sales are underway, and that means big savings on everything from mattresses to furniture. USA Today recently rounded up some of the major markdowns. Among the big savings, sales at Bed Bath & Beyond. You'll be able to find discounts of up to 20% on cookware in its Beyond Cooking event through Monday the 21st. And engagement rings, necklaces, and other jewelry are marked down by as much as 50% at Blue Nile. President's Day also finds electronics on sale. Check Best Buy for discounts on TVs, laptops, headphones, and more. Another category that sees big discounts over the holiday weekend, mattresses. Check Casper. You can save close to $600 on some mattresses and 10% off on other items. And eBay has a big mattress and bedding sale for President's Day. You can get half off on some items. Macy's is offering deep discounts of up to 65% on some home goods and kitchen essentials. And plenty of other retailers from Walmart to Amazon and Nordstrom also have sales featuring significant savings. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, so it is only 8-12 this morning, but it's also 36 degrees. It, it was, it's cold. I had to turn my car on early. 
It was one of those to mornings. To warm it up? Yeah, for yeah. Good five minutes. Absolutely. And we did get down to 34 degrees at the airport <sighs> in San Antonio, but elsewhere we have seen areas around the metro area getting to below freezing, even in parts of northern Bear County. Let's take a look at temperatures right now. It's 30 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 34 New Braunfels, 33 at JBSA Randolph, 33 at Rio Medina, 27 in Bandera, 29 up in Kerrville this morning. And a wider view here, you can see that generally Areas uh, in the hill country and points north are still dealing with the freezing morning. Uh, but again, we're going to be warming up very quickly today. Notice that it's quite a bit warmer down near Carrizo Springs and Catula. Still chilly, but temperatures are in the 40s. There are some cirrus clouds uh, to our south. And in San Antonio, we're going to see passing cirrus clouds today. So just some uh, wispy thin cirrus clouds out there. Not much to prevent us from warming up really quickly. And so by the afternoon, it should be very pleasant outside with a high temperature in the mid to upper 60s. 68 in Hondo for the high, 68 in Yavali, 66 in Kerrville and in New Braunfels, 66 in Gonzales. And in San Antonio, we'll be at 65 degrees. Warm spot on the map will be as it usually is, Del Rio at 71 for the afternoon high. So here's how today stacks up. Even though we're in the 30s right now, we'll already be in the 50s by 10. At noon, mostly sunny and near 60 degrees. It's going to feel great outside. And then in the afternoon, 65 for the high. Today, winds are going to be a lot calmer than they have been in the last couple of days. Winds from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. But if you do have Saturday night plans, know that it's going to get cold quickly. As soon as the sun sets close to 630, temperatures are going to fall and it'll be chilly in the evening with temperatures in the 50s and in the 40s. Now across the state of Texas, it's quiet and honestly across a good portion of the United States, it's fairly quiet. Really the only big weather maker is pushing across parts of New England and the Northeast. Some snowfall there. Uh, a high pressure system though is in place over the Mississippi River and this is going to direct our weather pattern over the next 24, 48 hours and bring us our first change. Our first change is going to be that that high is going to direct the goal moisture to stream into south central Texas throughout the day tomorrow, but you won't notice that it's a little more humid tomorrow. When you'll notice the humidity will be Monday morning. So take a look at the dew point forecast. For some reason this goes down, but it should be going up into the 60s. So by Monday morning, we're going to be looking at dew points in the 60s. That means that we'll have patchy drizzle and fog early Monday morning. That's the first change. Then temperatures are going to be warmer too. Monday and Tuesday, our highs are going to be in the 80s, but not for long. I showed you the temperature roller coaster graphic earlier. We're expecting a front to move through Wednesday morning, and that's going to drop our temperatures from the 80s Monday and Tuesday into the 40s Wednesday and Thursday. Also, with this front, there is a chance for some showers, especially Wednesday and Thursday. Now, up in the northern part of the hill country, there could even be some light sleet mixed in on Wednesday and Thursday because it's going to be cold. But because temperatures are going to be above freezing, there should be no impacts from that. That's something we'll keep an eye on. Just wanted to give you a heads up there. Unfortunately, no drought busting rain with this upcoming uh, system. Just again, a bit of a gray day on Wednesday and Thursday with a chance for some light showers and a big temperature drop from Tuesday to Wednesday. That'll by far be the biggest impact to you. Uh, in the weather this week. Uh, we'll be right back with more news. Good morning. Welcome back. And go Spurs go. Congratulations to four-time NBA champion and Olympic gold medalist. You know him. Number 20 on the court. Number one in our hearts. Manu Ginobili, a finalist for the NBA Hall of Fame. All part of the class of 2022. So the announcement made yesterday during All-Star Weekend in Cleveland. Honors Committee having the final say during the Final Four in April. Ginobili is a no-brainer as far as Spurs and international basketball fans are concerned. He helped the Spurs win four titles after the Spurs made him a second-round pick in 1999. He also brought the move, the Euro step to the NBA after winning a Euro League championship and later leading Argentina to a gold medal in the 04 Olympics. Manu. Uh, you know, obviously I, an iconic uh, game changer, so to speak. You know, the Eurostep, you know, he brought it over here and uh, his competitiveness, his winning ways uh, have been heralded for a long time and uh, it's, it's thrilling to, 
see him be rewarded. Very much earned. Also a finalist for the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, former Spur George Carl. He played for the Silver and Black back from 1973 to 1978. He then became an assistant coach for the Spurs before becoming a head coach for several other teams. Stick with basketball, but moving to high school. A doubleheader last night in the second round of the girls' high school basketball playoffs in Buda. Steel Knights leading things off against Cedar Ridge. Let's take a look. Steel led by 11 at halftime, but it was only a three-point game. We picked up action. Four and a half to play. Lady Raiders drive in the lane. Layup to cut the Steel lead down to just one steal. Sydney Love attacking the paint. Spins and knock down the jump early. A little spin move and then... That's a swish. Under a minute to go now. Love with a great dish. Addison James under the basket, and that is a bucket. Steel advances 49-43. to 43. Second game of the playoff doubleheader featuring the Clark Cougars taking on Vista Ridge. Haley Adams, wait for it. Ooh, pull up, crossover, off the mark, but Ariana Roberson grabbing the board, putting it back, eight-point lead. Roberson in the lane, stops, spins, knocking down the jumper. The lead grows to 10 just before the half. Ramsey nailing the corner three. Clark goes into the halftime 29-13. The final from Buda 70 to 38. Clark is victorious. Look at that. Dang. I know. I'm gonna play basketball later. I can't do any of the things they just did. No. <laughs> 822, 37 degrees At out. At least you're honest, Max. All right, coming up next, we'll get a sneak peek of today's episode of Texas Eats. David Elder sits down with the owner of a famous tamale shop Ooh. that now calls Yelmo City home. It's almost 30 years ago, you started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. Oh, you're, you're I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Before the first restaurant opened in South McAllen in 1998, Delia made tamales and sold them to neighbors and friends to provide for her family. It was very, my sister and I, she's the one to, to start to teach me to do the tamales. We start with a five pounds of masa and we sell it around the house and the profit that we have is to 250 for each one. The tamales Delia was making outgrew the holiday demand and expanded into a year-round business. Is this recipe from um, an aunt, uh, your mother, a grandmother? Like, where did the recipe come from? From my mother and her uh, uh, mother-in-law. Oh, wow, okay. And yes. so her mother-in-law? Yes. Oh, wow. I'm in. I'm always in. I don't think he's brought or showed us any food that I'm like, no, you know, that's not for me. It's a tough job that he does. Yeah, <laughs> but he does a great job at it. 826, 38 degrees out. All right, coming up after the break, the White House is accusing Russia of cyber attacks in Ukraine. Why the U.S. is asking some American businesses to make preparations. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 8.30 this morning, Saturday, February 19th. Thank you so much for joining us, starting your weekend with us. So our weekend technically was the last couple days. What would you do? Um, I tried to get some sun outside. Nice. Uh, I didn't like the wind, though. Mm. The wind was no fun, Sarah. Um, but is that going to be an issue today? No, it's not going to be an issue today. You know, winds are really only going to be from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour, but because it's going to be so dry out there and because we really have not seen much rain, the ground is very dry and so any kind of fires would spread really rapidly. So keep that in mind. Grass fire danger almost elevated today, so we'll have to be careful in that uh, department. But generally, it's cold now, but it's not going to be cold in a couple of hours time as the sun is already warming us up. We got down to 34 degrees degrees at the airport. Right now it's 35 and you can see that there's still some areas, especially up in the Hill Country that are below freezing. 31 in Kerrville, 29 in Fredericksburg, 30 in Austin, but it's already 42 degrees in Del Rio, 42 in Uvalde, and it's even in the upper 40s down near Laredo. There are some clouds across parts of south central Texas, south of San Antonio, uh, but today in San Antonio we're really only going to see mostly sunny skies with a few cirrus clouds out there. So if you're heading out to the rodeo today, it's going to be nice. Temperatures are going to climb into the mid 60s. By noon, we'll already be near 60 degrees. And as I just mentioned, those winds will be calmer than the last few days from the east at 5 to 15.
10 miles per hour. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? A quick warm up today and a quick warm up tomorrow into the 60s. But by Monday morning, it's going to be muggy so much so that we'll likely see some fog and drizzle. And then we have big temperature swings in the week ahead. We're talking going from the 80s all the way into the 40s for highs. We'll talk about rain chances with that upcoming front too in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, firefighters responding to a call in abandoned gentlemen's club on the southwest side overnight. They got the call just before 1 a.m. at the intersection of New Laredo Highway, Somerset Road, and South Zarzamora. According to officials on scene, when firefighters arrived, flames were shooting through the roof. They were able to put the fire out, but the building sustained heavy damage. Officials say they have responded to this location several times before. No injuries were reported. Arson investigators were called out to determine the cause of the fire. All right, top stories this morning. Dozens of parents voicing their concerns about the Medina Valley's athletic director and head football coach. The defenders confirming that coach Lee Crisp failed a drug screening before he was promoted to those positions. So Lee Crisp admitted to taking medication without a prescription in his application for those positions back in 2019. It is concerning because those same records show that he had a commercial driver's license with a school bus endorsement. Sources say Chris no longer drives athletes to and from events. Sources also tell our defenders that Chris was placed on leave after community members came forward but returned to work earlier this week. Parents want to know what the district has found in their investigation. But are you still using that good old boy system that they've been using for years? And I think they're just a lot of them are very close minded. Parents voice other complaints against Crisp, like refusing to allow a football player to ride home with the team after a game in Lockhart back in October, and that he allegedly made fun of another player's lisp at back to back practices last fall. A district spokeswoman had previously referred to the complaint as just rumors or unsubstantiated allegations. In your morning headlines, the White House is now accusing Russia of cyber attacks in Ukraine. There is concern that extensive cyber attacks could be a precursor for any military attacks. ABC's Mary Alice Parks is at the White House with what administration is asking American businesses now to do. The White House on high alert for possible cyber attacks against Ukraine and the homeland, saying Russia is to blame for recent cyber attacks in Ukraine. Russia denies the claim. While of limited impact, this recent spate of cyber attacks in Ukraine are consistent with what a Russian effort could look like in laying the groundwork for more disruptive cyber attacks accompanying a potential further invasion. The administration saying there is no specific cyber threat against the U.S. right now, but calling on private American companies, especially those in charge of crucial infrastructure like power and water, to be ready. We urge our private sector partners to exercise incident response plans and put in place the cybersecurity defenses like encryption and multi-factor authentication that make cyber attacks harder for even sophisticated cyber actors. U.S. businesses and consumers could also feel economic ripple effects if Russia were to invade Ukraine, potentially even more supply chain disruptions and spikes in energy prices. Russia is a commodity giant. They may not have great technology and they don't have a Silicon Valley like we do, but they put out a lot of raw materials. Russia is one of the world's leading oil exporters and also with Ukraine produces key materials used to create computer chips and circuits. U.S. officials say sanctions would not take direct aim at Russia's oil and gas exports, but the White House is quickly working with energy producers to try to prepare for shortages if Russia cuts off supply or if pipelines are disrupted. We've succeeded in largely compensating for any shortfall that could unfold. And of course, front and center on everyone's mind is the potential human toll. White House and other leaders here in Washington deeply concerned that there could be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of displaced people and refugees. It could be a humanitarian crisis that spills beyond the region. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, the White House. All right, well, back here at home, construction is complete at the second oldest park across the country, and that park happens to be right here in San Antonio. Historic San Pedro Springs Park now open to the public with some new features. That's right, new and lovely features. Jonathan Cotto spending some time at the park this morning. Joining us live, so Jonathan, pretty great way to start off a Saturday, walk in the park, <laughs> if I must say so myself. So tell us Absolutely. what can folks expect if they plan to visit. 
Absolutely. I wouldn't have had it any other way spending the Saturday morning in the park. Well, folks can expect uh, getting their steps in, that's for sure. If they want to hit this trail that's now complete, Max, I highly recommend it. I know you keep a track of how many steps you get in the morning. Uh, but they can also expect kite flying, uh, lawn games, uh, fitness activities, a number of fun stuff. Isn't that right, Connie? That's right. Yeah, this this morning we're going to be out here. We're going to have a lot of fun. Like you said, a lot of kite flying, a lot of exercising, and we even have a coffee trailer coming in. And I just landed eyes on that coffee trailer. It looks super, super cool. Connie, tell me a little bit about this, this coffee trailer. <laughs> yeah, so it's a converted horse trailer, and it's called the, the Poor Box, and they have really amazing coffee, and so they'll be here today. That's a clever conversion. I love that they turned it in from a horse trailer to a coffee shop. Very nice. But Connie, you know, as we were walking the trail, I noticed some of the new light fixtures. That's that's a new feature for the San Pedro Springs Park, correct? That is. This is some of the new improvements to the park on this side of the park by the library. We have new lighting. We have new trees, 183 new trees planted and a new green space. Well, folks, there you have it. The second oldest park in the country and it so happens to be here in our own backyard here in san antonio come on out today starting at 11 from 11 to 1 gonna be all kinds of fun outdoor activities max sarah got it Koto, thank you so much all right the south san antonio chamber of commerce revealing a new name and a new brand we know the pandemic hit small business around the country around texas and around bear county so hard so in two years how are we now doing that is why tomorrow on Leading Us 8, 8 a.m., Connie Gonzalez, the chair of the South Texas Business Partnership, she's joining us live. We are set to talk about the new branding, the business atmosphere, and what the future looks like for small businesses. If you have any questions you would like to submit, you can do that right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of ksant.com. Time now, 8.38, 38 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA how one school teacher is teaching their students to become the next generation of the stock market kings. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 38 degrees to start your Saturday morning. When will it heat up? Will it heat up? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a moment. Good morning and welcome back. So this time of year, everyone's trying to get their hands on Girl Scout cookies. These were all at my desk, by the way. This was all yours? <laughs> to be fair, our dealer, our Girl Scout dealer locally in our newsroom, left a bunch over the weekend for me, so... <laughs> Okay, Thank you, so <laughs> this is uh, this is my favorite, actually. Mine too, Samoa's. Samoa's, yeah, mm -hmm. they're absolutely the best. Um, this is fantastic. Yeah, so okay. if you can't get enough Girl Scout cookies, mm -hmm. like obviously we can't. 21 local restaurants oh. are, and venues are taking part in the third annual Girl Scout Cookie Flavor Fest, and it's happening right now. That is awesome. All right, so right now, KSET.com, you can find all the details, all the locations that are participating. The Girl Scout Cookie Flavor Fest kicked off yesterday, runs through February 27th. It's next Sunday. It's also my brother's birthday. Happy birthday. Customers can try out different concoctions, and if you tag GSSWT in your social media posts about them, you can have a chance to get this. Win a year's supply of Girl Scout cookies. Whoa. What? <laughs> All right, so you can try your favorite Girl Scout cookie and a shake, a latte, a cheesecake, or even a cocktail or a beer. Would you try a Samoa beer? Yes, of course I would. Mm. You can also vote for your favorite cookie concoction online. I saw Burger Boy has a thin mint shake. That's the one I'm oh, very excited about. That, see, that one makes you sense. You can't go wrong with that. I, no. Who doesn't? I love mint ice cream. I do too, mm. but but it is controversial. A lot of people don't like mint ice cream. Speaking of controversy, what is your kind of favorite kind of Girl Scout cookie, Sarah? I'm going to go with you guys. I like the Samoa. Ah, wow. nice. Team Samoa. What's this one? Unite. It's the new one. I wasn't oh, it's a, the new one. I wasn't a fan. Remember, it's I the, didn't know this is a new they're one. They're Adventure Fools, and they try to be like the crispy brownie things. Interesting. Oh, like the like burnt ends of brownies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Might yeah. have to open these up. You know, not every open. Girl Scout cookie can can be a major winner, but they're all delicious. So there you go. And that was a great mom answer. We yeah. all can't be winners, but we I've can all try really hard. Several boxes already this season. Way so. to go, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let's talk about the weather. We just got the pollen count in. It looks good, guys. Now there are three allergens out there: molds, elm, and mountain cedar, but they're all low. Now, usually by by now, mountain cedar season is is coming to an end, if not over completely. So could this signal that mountain cedar season, the end of mountain cedar season is near? 
Well, we'll keep you posted. You just got to check in with the fallen count every day. Uh, you know, uh, again, yesterday Mountain Cedar was high, so a big improvement there. O outside right now, we have got beautiful blue skies at the airport. That's where this reading is taking place. Wind chill, though, of 31 degrees. It feels cold because we are dealing with a bit of a light breeze from the west northwest at five miles per hour. And there are some clouds out there. You just got to go south of San Antonio and east of San Antonio to see them. Uh, look at the clouds clouds across parts of Wilson County and moving into Gonzales County as well. Temperatures above freezing now. Everybody is above freezing. Earlier we were seeing many locations at or below freezing, but it's 37 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 33 in uh, Kerrville, 34 in New Braunfels, 34 in Hondo. A wider view here, and you can really see that cloud layer south of San Antonio. We are going to see some cirrus clouds out there, uh, but especially to the south. And notice Notice how much warmer it is down there. It's still chilly, but 45 in Pleasant, 45 in Catula, 45 in Beeville. These clouds in the overnight hours acted like a blanket and kept things just a smidge warmer than around the Alamo City. All in all, though, it is a chilly morning, and with those winds light but still present, we are having a bit of a wind chill. It feels like it's 31 in San Antonio. It feels like it's 30 in New Braunfels. Thankfully, though, the sun is out, and we are just going to see a gorgeous day around San Antonio. Again, as I mentioned, some cirrus clouds out there, especially during the second part of the day, but it, it should be beautiful. We'll already be in the 50s by 10, close to 60 degrees around lunch, and in the afternoon, 65 for the high temperature. Winds will uh, be from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tonight, once the sun sets, uh, we'll be seeing temperatures fall quickly. So bring that jacket if you have any evening plans. You're going to need it. It's going to get chilly. It's also very dry out there, and it's going to stay dry out there. You know, there could be some elevated fire danger, especially uh, across parts of the hill country. So use some caution uh, if you're doing any kind of outdoor burning and it is discouraged to do any kind of outdoor burning today. But but just use caution about that dry air in place. But that's the first thing that's going to change for us. Starting tomorrow, we're going to see Gulf moisture increase. Now you won't really feel the humidity tomorrow, but clouds will be increasing during the day tomorrow. And by Monday morning, you'll definitely feel the humidity out there as dew points will be in the 60s, near 60 degrees. Whenever we get a dew point near 60, that's when you can start to feel the humidity. And in this case, on Monday morning, you'll probably see it in the form of some fog and some drizzle. Temperatures are going to be warmer too on Monday and Tuesday, significantly so. We'll be in the 80s, but it won't last long because a stronger cold front is going to move through Wednesday morning, and that's going to keep our highs in the 40s on Wednesday and Thursday. So we're going to go from the 80s to the 40s. Talk about uh, a war wardrobe uh, problem there. You're going to need to wear the short sleeves on Monday and Tuesday and then really wear the heavier coats on Wednesday and Thursday. As far as rain goes, not a great chance for widespread, widespread healthy soaking rains in San Antonio, but Wednesday and Thursday there is a chance for some isolated showers and uh, in the hill country as well. So big thing to keep in mind is that temperatures will go up and down over the next several days. Monday and Tuesday will be warm. Wednesday and Thursday will be chilly. Thank you, Sarah. What'd you find? Okay, just real quick. Tandem <clears throat> San Antonio has an I want Samoa latte. There you go. That, if you go to KSAT.com, read description, super good. All right, 848, 40 degrees out. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, zero, four, Fireball one, Daily four, eight, nine, eight, three, Fireball three. And your cash five, 13, 17, 18, 24, 34. Here we go, Mega Millions, 6, 11, 50, 63, 68. Big number 17, Mega Pyre 4. Good luck, we'll be right back. Well, as we continue to, continue to honor Black History Month, we recognize today's black leaders in education who are making history in lives of their students each and every day. At one charter school in D.C., kids are training to become the next generation of stock market kings. Jaffney Gray shares her story. Take the money you have, you invest it, and then you watch it work for you. A path to financial freedom and wealth for everyone who works and learns inside this building. Here at Legends Charter School, which fittingly sits in a corporate office area of Washington, D.C., financial education is comprehensively built into the curriculum and offered to the entire school community. A payment that is taken out of your bank account. This is your money. This is not anybody else's money. Whose is it? What's the question? What's the answer? 
What is it? Shamari James, one of the four founding members of Legends, wanted the student body of mostly minority children to get real life experiences in investing and how money works. This is the machine that has your money in it. It's hooked up to your bank. When you have an understanding about money, it, it changes things, it opens things up for you. The kids couldn't have better teachers on the subject. Shamari snatched people yeah. like Justin DeVoe right out of the financial set? world, convincing them that helping these kids is their true calling. So when you start investing, don't get scared or upset because you don't have a lot of money right away. The kids are extra invested in the class because they can win hundreds of dollars in scholarship money to invest in their own portfolios. You really like need to learn how to invest and grow your money at a young age. And I think that's really good for young kids to learn that. As it turns out, fifth grader Sincere Turner is really good at investing. He's one of the current students picked to use scholarship dollars to build up his personal portfolio. The school uses its resources to help create wealth for the adults as well, who are part of the Ledges community as well. We know what teacher wages are, so what Justin does is he holds specific classes for just the teachers to come in to be able to talk to them about their finances and financial education as well, so they can feel prepared. And I love the fact that he also does the financial department, Mr. DeVos also helped the parents as well to save, to start investing, investing in stocks and stuff like that. A school that's taking investing into one's community to a whole new exciting level. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. That is an awesome story, and financial literacy is so important that it needs to be taught in school. So it I'm really glad does. she does that story. Yeah, and now investing, you know, on apps on all the phones now too. So it's so easy. Mm -hmm. All right, time now: 8:54, 40 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. All right, for all those parents out there, listen up. It is never too early to start thinking about summer break. The Botanical Garden has opened registration for their summer camp for children ages five to 17 years old. Your kids can learn about nature, ecology, and botany. You can register on the Botanical Gardens website. The first summer session begins June 6th. I wanna go to this camp, sounds like fun. And if you're looking for something for the kids to do during spring break, the Botanical Gardens is also hosting Chef Camp from yes. March 14th through 16th. This camp is designed for children ages 8 to 12. I love the chef program. We've both done stories with them, and it's so great to teach kids early on about nutrition and, you know, they how you can make... They did a bug segment with us. Remember that? Yes. Like how to cook crickets and yeah. worms. Cricket protein. Yeah, that's There cool. you go. <laughs> Time now, 857, 40 degrees out. A new tool for diabetics who have to take insulin has just been approved by the FDA. What it is and what it does, that's coming up. And a very important recall to tell you about from baby formula to strollers. What you need to know, the full details coming up in our next half hour. We'll be right back. Breaking news overnight, a man driving his truck through a home. We're going to explain why in just a bit. Besides baby formula, two other products for babies are being recalled. What you need to know is coming up. Kite flying, lawn games, fitness activities, and library activities, and it's all happening here at the San Pedro Springs Park later this morning. I'll tell you everything you need to know if you want to head out later today. And as you just saw there, a gorgeous start to the morning. A little cold for some out there. 42 degrees to start the weekend. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments, but until then, Good morning. It is 9 o'clock this Saturday, February 19th. It's 42 degrees too cold for you. Yes, I do have a question though. Did you just eat a Girl Scout cookie right, no. right before? I, you know heard, I heard like crinkling. So there was no crinkling. <laughs> We're gonna bring out props for this one. It was stuck and so during one of the intros, literally had to rip the box open. Why did you? It's a whole thing. Okay. We were saying how hungry we were. Well, now I know he's gonna be eating during our breaks, so. Breakfast of Champions. Thank you, Girl Scouts. <laughs> Sarah Spivey, please tell us about the weather. So uh, let's start with the pollen count, guys. It looks pretty good today. There are three allergens out there, but Mountain Cedar yesterday was high. It's now the lowest allergen present. It's low at 20. Elm is low at 30 and molds are low at 330. So again, a fairly good looking pollen count. And uh, Mountain Cedar season usually comes to an end right about now. So hopefully we'll be seeing that number continue to go down. All right, take a look at the satellite and the temperatures. We've got the tail of two stories here. To the south of San 
Antonio. A bit more cloud cover. These are wispy thin cirrus clouds uh, and it is chilly out there, but we have steadily seen the thermometer rise since sunrise. We got down to 34 this morning at the airport. It's already 45, 35 in Kerrville. Kerrville was in the 20s this morning, 47 in Del Rio, and you can see down near Catula, it's already 50 degrees. So we are going to have a very nice day today. In fact, temperatures should rise to about 65 degrees under mostly sunny skies tomorrow, starting off chilly as well, but above freezing 40 degrees. And it is going to be a bit breezy. Winds from the south gusting up to 20 miles per hour and clouds will increase, but it's still going to be a great day, a high temperature near 70. But then then the week ahead, a temperature roller coaster and I took that fairly literally with this graphic. So tomorrow we're going to be at 68 by Monday and Tuesday. We're going to be in the 80s. February, it's not all that rare to see temperatures in the 80s in February, but that is a lot warmer than seasonably average. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, a strong cold front will knock our highs down into the 40s on Wednesday and Thursday. We do have a chance for rain with this upcoming system. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police tell us that a man made good on his threat and now that man is facing charges. Take a look. This was the scene around 345 this morning. Police say that suspect drove his truck through a home on North Navidad Street near Perez. He tried to run away, but officers caught him just a few blocks away. Luckily, no injuries reported in the crash, but officers had to brace the structure because it was on the verge of collapsing. Now, police on the scene telling us that man had allegedly made threats to drive this vehicle into his in-laws home because he was upset with them. Right now, charges are pending. All right, so happening right now, happening later this morning, if you're hoping to get out of the house this weekend, Head outdoors, maybe get some steps in, like Sarah always makes fun of me, I don't get enough steps in. There is a new way to do that construction at the historic San Pedro Springs Park. It is complete. And an Alava Grand opening is scheduled for later this morning. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live with details on what you can expect. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. And I think there's a lot of people already beating you to the punch here, Max. Connie and I are seeing a number of people already walking their dogs out for a jog. The sun's out. It's really starting to warm up. It feels really, really nice out. Connie, this is such an exciting uh, morning with uh, the opening of San Pedro Springs Park. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what's going to be taking place later this morning. Yes, we're going to have a lot of fun. We have our hot dog guy. We have our coffee trailer. And we're going to have lawn games for the families to come in out. We're going to kick it off with a really great ribbon cutting in the morning and then we'll be here till one o'clock um, with doing long games and having fun. Now District 1 along with the City of San Antonio and Parkside Recreation have been very busy uh, not only uh, putting a lot of effort towards this park but there's going to be other projects that are going to be opening along the way. Is that that's right. We have another bond project at MLK Park that we'll be celebrating next weekend. So we'll have a ribbon cutting there, some activities there as well. So join us at that park too. Now, Connie, remind us, when is that ribbon cutting ceremony taking place this morning? It's at 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. here at San Pedro Springs. Thank you so much, Connie. Well, there you have it, folks, from 11 to 1 p.m. There's going to be kite flying, lawn games, some library activities, some fitness activities. Come on out. It's the weekend. The sun's out. It's going to be a good time. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. On your morning headlines, Illinois law enforcement says thousands of drivers were stranded on I-65 this, this week after a massive snowstorm. So take a look. This looks like a parking lot in heavy snow. Now, the storm actually caused several crashes. One ended up being deadly. Plow trucks have been working around the clock to clear the expressway. The road finally opening up just yesterday afternoon. Some drivers were stranded there for 17 hours. Educators in Minnesota are preparing to leave the classroom and go on strike. Teachers say they are asking for smaller class sizes, more mental health services and salary increases, especially for unlicensed support staff. In St. Paul, a majority of the educators voted yes to strike, while in Minneapolis, it was almost a unanimous vote of yes. There are still steps required to officially strike. The unions would have to formally notify their districts and give a 10-day notice. 
All right, on top of a baby formula recall, two more products for infants and toddlers, they're being recalled. We've told you about Abbott Nutrition recalling some powder formulas after reports of four different babies becoming very sick. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz now has what you need to know, you know, what containers you need to check. Plus, she has new details on two more baby products being pulled from the market. Before you make the baby's formula, an urgent recall of some powdered Similac, Elementum, and Elicare. The FDA is investigating four infant infections, including one in Texas and including one death that may be linked to the formula from Abbott's Sturgis, Michigan plant. To check yours, look at the bottom of the container. If the code starts with digits 22 through 37 and contains KH, SH, or Z2, and has an expiration date of April 1st, throw it out. If you need help checking your formula, Abbott has set up this page to do just that. We have a link to it on our website. Is this your baby's walker? Safety regulators say infants can be seriously hurt or killed. Zeno is recalling these walkers because they don't meet standards. They can fit through a standard doorway and don't stop at the edge of a step as required. Also, a baby can slip through the leg opening, trapping his head. Contact Zeno for a refund. And stroller danger. Valco Baby is recalling Snap Duo Trend strollers after 200 reports of the front wheels cracking or coming off in use. Contact the company for new parts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, avocado lovers can now breathe a sign of relief. Mexico is now allowed to export the popular produce into the U.S. once again. The ban came on the eve of the Super Bowl after someone threatened an American food inspector in Michoacan. The Associated Press reported it's the same area where cartels try to extort avocado farmers. The USDA is working with Mexican authorities to enhance safety measures for inspectors in the fields. All right, time now, 908, 44 degrees out. Well, diabetics who use insulin now have a new tool to keep their health on track, and it just so happens to be an app. Those details still ahead. All right, a special anniversary for scientists with the Mars rover Perseverance has been able to do in just one year. 44, too cold, Max? Uh, no, not Northeast no. Guy. I'd say 40. 40 is my line. Mm -hmm. I say 50. Okay. All right. But you Sarah moved down Spivey from 60. says it's going to be a beautiful Saturday. She'll have that forecast for us when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. NASA's Mars rover Perseverance celebrating the end of its first year on the red planet. And guess what? It learned how to run. It's not just walking, it's running. And the one ton car sized rover has proven that it can cover more than 1,000 feet in a day. So, in addition to setting speed records on Mars, the rover's helicopter has completed 19 aerial surveys. That's another major accomplishment considering the original plan was to complete only five. All right, so while exceeding most expectations, the rover is still looking for signs of life on Mars one year later, so it hasn't come in contact with any aliens just yet. Oh, no. Did you say, oh, no? Yeah, it would be cool if it did. Oh, okay, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Spivey, what are your thoughts on uh, Perseverance? Well, I just think that Mars, it's cool that Mars has its own atmosphere. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a thin atmosphere. Right. But that's why they have dust storms and things like that on Mars, so. Very interesting. Pretty oh awesome. Gosh. I'm glad yeah. we don't have to worry also, about Also, okay, you want to hear something cool about Mars' oh, atmosphere? Oh, yes. Okay, so because it's so thin, in just a small amount of space, temperatures vary widely. So at your feet, it could be like a 60 degrees, and then okay. at the top of your head, it would be like 20 degrees. Whoa. Yeah, oh, really cool. Wear a hat. <laughs> All right, I'll remember that when I go to Mars. Okay. Uh, temperatures out there right now, though, it is chilly. It's 45 at the airport, 44 at JBSA Randolph, 47 in New Braunfels, 43 at Bernie Sage Airfield. But if you've been with us throughout the morning, you know that this is significantly warmer than what we were at even an hour ago. So temperatures are currently rising. We were down to 34 this morning at the airport. We're now at 45. It's 36 in Comfort, 35 in Kerrville, 37 in Bandera, 49 in Divine. 
And a wider view here, it's 47 in Del Rio, 50 already in Catula, and 47 in Beeville. Now we do have some of those clouds out to our south, as I mentioned, and throughout the day today, we'll have some cirrus clouds around San Antonio, especially thickening up in the evening hours, but still a mostly sunny day on, in uh, store for us today. As far as highs go, we're really looking at the mid to upper 60s, so it's going to be a really nice day outside. 66 in Kerrville, 68 in Uvalde, out toward Del Rio in the 70s, 71 degrees for the forecast high out there, 68 in Beeville, 66 in Gonzales, and here in San Antonio, here's how the day will shape up. At 10, we'll already be in the 50s. We're already in the mid 40s right now and at noon we will be near 60 degrees, mostly sunny and pleasant in the afternoon. 65 for the high east winds today, not as breezy, especially uh, since Thursday. We'll really only see winds from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. It will get chilly though tonight. Temperatures will fall very quickly after sunset. Grab that jacket if you have Saturday night plans. All right. On the satellite and radar, it's a quiet morning across the nation. The one exception is across parts of the northeast where there's some snowfall, uh, but a really high pressure system remaining dominant, and it's going to change our weather slightly in the next 24, 36 hours. Here's what's going to happen. As that high moves off to the east, we're going to see the air move in a clockwise fashion around that so that'll pick up some gulf moisture so that by Monday morning you're really going to see and, and feel the humidity. So here's what that looks like for tomorrow. Sunday afternoon is going to feel great outside. Low humidity but higher than today and then by Monday morning those dew points will be really near 60 degrees. 60 degrees is when you start to feel the mugginess and in this case we're going to see it in the form of patchy drizzle and fog early Monday morning. That's our first change. Our second changes the fact that it's going to be much warmer Monday and Tuesday. Highs will be in the 80s on Monday and Tuesday. And you're ready for our third change? Stronger cold front will be moving through Wednesday morning. With it will come a small chance for rain that we'll talk about in a second. But really the biggest thing you'll notice is a quick drop in temperatures. By Wednesday afternoon, our temperatures will be in the 40s. So we go from the 80s uh, Tuesday afternoon to the 40s Wednesday. And that'll be chilly on, on Thursday too with highs in the 40s as well. Back to those rain chances. So it's not looking like this is going to be the drought buster that we need in San Antonio, but there is a decent chance for some showers Wednesday and Thursday, isolated to widely scattered. And I will mention this up in the hill country. So we're talking Kerrville area. There could even be some light sleet mixed in with the rain on Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures will be above freezing, so there's not going to be any kind of impacts from that. Uh, but I just wanted to put that on your radar. Just know that the biggest impact to us in San Antonio is going to be the quick change in temperatures from the 80s Monday and Tuesday to the 40s Wednesday and Thursday and we'll continue to update that forecast for you. Send notifications right to your phone on our KSAT Weather Authority app. Max right. and Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 917, 46 degrees out. Well, the White House is observing Black History Month in grand fashion. What visitors can see during their visit. And a company has come up with a more convenient way for some diabetics to stay on top of when they need insulin. We're going to explain in just a bit. Texas Lotto numbers, pick three, seven, zero, four, fireball one, daily four, eight, nine, eight, three, fireball three. And your cash five, 13, 17, 18, 24, 34. Here we go. Mega Million 6, 11, 50, 63, 68. Big number 17. Mega Pyre 4. Good luck. We'll be right back. The Food and Drug Administration has approved the first app that lets diabetics use it to schedule and deliver doses of insulin. The company Tandem Diabetes Care says the app connects to a special insulin pump that gives needed doses of bolus insulin which stops glucose spikes after meals. The app with this new feature will be available for free through a software update. The company, however, did not say when the feature will be available. All right, so Some seniors in Florida, they are staying social through, get this, virtual reality. Look at that. Cool. So the, the residents at an assisted living center in Tampa, they've been using virtual reality headsets for the last few months. The facility brought the goggles to help their residents who might have had a hard time with social isolation amid the pandemic. And I'm sure they're getting a first look into the metaverse, so everyone wins. <laughs> wow. No comment? I mean, I, oh, look, we can see. Nah, can't see too much. I've never done the virtual reality thing. No, me neither, but. It could make me, like, dizzy or sick or something, yeah, you know? Yeah, I could. All I right. like to live in this reality.
Good point. Right? Me too. That was good. <laughs> 922, 46 degrees out. It's Black History Month, and the White House has an exhibit showcasing some extraordinary artifacts we'll show you after the break. An exhibit highlighting pioneering black Americans is on display at the executive residence of the White House for Black History Month. Among the works are some unique and extraordinary moments of American history captured in different media. You can see a 1967 photo of Thurgood Marshall sitting next to President Lyndon B. Johnson right before the announcement of Marshall's nomination as the first black Supreme Court justice. It also includes the original oath Marshall signed. The collection highlights noteworthy black firsts in literature, music, and in the Biden administration. They include display of Ella Fitzgerald, the first black artist to win a Grammy Award. The Biden presidency boasts the first black female vice president, secretary, secretary of defense, and black male EPA administrator. All right, time now is 926, 47 degrees out. Do you drink wine, Max? Of course. But do you prefer it as, it's not your preferred drink, right? I would say it's, uh, I've actually broken this down. So top tier is tequila, wine second tier. Okay, well there you go. Millennials apparently are not drinking mm. enough wine and the wine industry is a little concerned. However, we talked to the Texas uh, wine vineyards here and they talk about how they think that they actually can play a big role with the millennial consumer. I will say a lot of Texas vineyards, they're pretty great. We went to uh, oh, Fredericksburg. Definitely fun. Fantastic. All right, and we have the latest on more states lifting mask mandates despite some pushback from the CDC. We're gonna explain in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend at 9.30 this Saturday, February 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Do you have any big plans for us today? Oh, you know, I'm, it's going to be an outdoor day. Yeah. I think it's definitely going to be an outdoor day. Meet up with some friends, maybe at an outdoor uh, restaurant bar. We're going to check in with John the Coto in a little bit, but he's out at the San Pedro Park. You should check it out. There you go. Sarah, is today a good day to be doing outside stuff? Absolutely. Not only because it's going to be very comfortable outside, especially after the chilly start this morning, but because the allergens are low. Let's take a look at the pollen count for the day today. You know, yesterday mountain cedar was high because of how windy it was over the last couple of days, but mountain cedar has gone down. It's now low at only 20. And honestly, this is the time of year that we really start to see mountain cedar fade. Uh, out of existence in our atmosphere. So let's hope that that trend continues. Elm is present, but in low amounts and molds are present too, but low as well at 330. So a good looking pollen count and a good looking forecast. Outside right now, though, it is chilly. It's 45 degrees at the airport, 47 in Del Rio, 49 in Yavaldi, 47 in New Braunfels, and still in the 30s up in Kerrville. But in spite of the fact that there's clouds to our south, we're going to see a mostly sunny day with just some wispy cirrus clouds out there. So if you're planning on going to the rodeo today or just enjoying some time outdoors like we've been mentioning, things are going to look nice. 51 at 10, 59 at noon, 65 for the high temperature with mostly sunny skies and relatively light winds from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So what's up with the weather? Quick warm up today and tomorrow. It's going to be chilly in the morning tomorrow too, but comfortable in the afternoon. You will, however, notice the humidity, especially by Monday morning when we'll see some fog and some drizzle. That's the first change in our forecast to talk about. The second change, big temperature swings. We're talking temperatures from the 80s to temperatures in the 30s and 40s. So I'll detail that, including rain chances with that upcoming front in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, firefighters again on the scene of a fire, this time on the southwest side at an abandoned gentleman's club. So take a look. The call came in around 1 this morning. The building located at the intersection of New Laredo Highway, Somerset Road, and South Zars Mora. Fire officials on the scene telling us when firefighters got there, they found the flames shooting through the roof. They were able to put the flames out, but the building was heavily damaged. Officials saying they've actually responded to this abandoned location several times before. Luckily, no injuries were reported, but arson investigators, they are on the scene trying to figure out what exactly started this. All right, it's what we've been talking about throughout the morning. The wait is finally over after undergoing major renovations, big improvements. The San Pedro Springs set to reopen to the public. This morning, city staffers have several things planned as part of the Springs grand opening. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the Springs with today's celebration. Good morning, Jonathan. 
Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Yes, it's a wonderful day to be out here. My jacket, I'm slowly but surely, surely taking it off. It's cold in the shade, but it feels good out under the sun. Uh, things are already starting to, to happen here. We have coffee. We have the hot dog stand setting up. It's a wonderful day to be outside, Connie. It's beautiful at San Pedro Springs Park, and we encourage everyone to come on out and spend the day out here. Now, Connie, talk to me a little bit again about the process that's just gone underway as far as kind of just beautifying this, this beautiful park. That's right. So we just finished the bond, 2017 bond improvements here at San Pedro Springs Park. And it includes um, new trees, a new uh, walkway, lighting, an entry point, and just really beautiful enhancements to this already beautiful park. I know it's going to be great here at 11, folks. There's going to be kite flying, lawn games, physical uh, activities here, exercise programs here, and the library is going to be open too if you're interested in coming out. That's going to be taking place at 11 o'clock this morning from 11 to 1 p.m. Connie and I are just inching and inching closer to the coffee, and then we're going to make our way over to the hot dog. I never thought I'd crave a hot dog at 9 o'clock in the morning, 9.30 in the morning until now. I think we're going to get one, Agreed. right? Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> well, back, Sarah, back to you folks again. The time is 11 a.m. Make sure to come on out to the park. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. Now to the latest on the fight against COVID and in some places, the fight against mask mandates. Some schools are taking steps to eliminate masks as the rollout of four vaccines for children five faces a setback. That's right. ABC's Elwin Lopez explains. Let them breathe. This morning, a growing push to roll back COVID restrictions. All but one state, Hawaii, announcing plans to lift indoor mask mandates in most public places. And schools are dropping those mask mandates in at least four states. It's going to be odder and odder when we see packed sports stadiums with nobody wearing a mask and basketball games, and then yet kids still masked in schools. I think if we're going to lift mask mandates in, in, in basketball arenas, we can probably lift mask mandates in schools. Others set to ditch them in the coming weeks. We're at a pretty powerful moment here where we take another step to, to normalcy. What's another month really going to do? What's another two weeks going to do? This despite CDC's recommendations for universal masking while COVID-19 transmission remains high, with some of those most vulnerable raising concerns. This as the FDA waits for more data before rolling out Pfizer's vaccine to children under five. The agency needing to better understand how well the third shot works for the youngest age group in the face of Omicron. And on Friday, COVID hitting the U.S. Surgeon General and his family. Vivek Murthy tweeting, when you've been as safe as you can, getting COVID-19 can be frustrating and disappointing. With cases declining nationwide, Utah and California now taking the lead to move from a pandemic to an endemic phase. Let me be clear that this is not the end of COVID, but it is the end, or, or rather the beginning, of treating COVID as we do other seasonal respiratory viruses. And in Boston, you no longer have to show proof of vaccination indoors. The mayor there is saying that the data shows they're ready for this next step. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Well, if you want to get a vaccine, you still can. Happening today, Metro Health will be hosting a pop-up clinic at McNair Middle School off of Pearsall Road in Atascosa. It's going on right now in the gym until 2 p.m. All three COVID vaccines will be available for eligible adult, adults and children. You can also get your flu shot. Also happening today, if you need to get rid of some household hazardous waste, well, you can do so properly. Solid Waste Management is hosting an event where you can do exactly that. From now until noon, you can dispose of any paint, oil, chemicals, pesticides, batteries, and electronics at the Bulky Waste Collection Center right off of Rigsby Avenue on the city's east side. You do have to bring a valid ID and a copy of your most recent CPS Energy Bill. All right, the South San Antonio Chamber of Commerce revealing a new and exciting name and a new brand. We know the pandemic has hit small businesses around the country, around Texas and around Barrett County so hard. So we're two years into this pandemic. How are we doing? That is why tomorrow morning on Leading Us at 8 a.m., Connie Gonzalez, the chair of the South Texas Business Partnership, she's joining us live. We're going to be talking about the new branding, the new name, the new business atmosphere, and what the future can look like for small businesses. So if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Us A section of KSAT.com. All right, Max, millennials, they're drinking less wine. I'm sorry. So <laughs> instead of popping bottles, 
popping bottles of wine. Millennials tend to pour a pint of craft beer, crack a seltzer, seltzy, or even shake up a cocktail. Exactly, cocktail something shaking. like that. <laughs> so it all comes from the latest data to come out of the 2022 State of the Wine Industry Report. So I spoke with a millennial who visits breweries all over the country about why this may be. I also visited a local vineyard that believes Texas wineries may have an advantage with the millennial consumer. Pop, pour, and sip. It's something wine drinkers have been doing for centuries, but now the billion dollar industry is worried because the people doing the majority of the sipping are baby boomers, not millennials. The annual State of the Wine Industry report outlined this concern, pointing out that if this trend continues, sales of American wine could plummet by 20% in the next decade. So part of wine's problem is that it kind of has this air of snobbiness about it, right? Like you have to know all the fancy terms. Adiana McFarland is a millennial who has become a craft beer connoisseur. The former nightlife reporter for the Austin American Statesman is currently traveling the country with her husband and stops at breweries along the way. All of this documented on her social media. She believes millennials are more attracted to craft beer over wine because the craft beer industry is more approachable, but mainly because of price. I graduated the year of the Great Recession. I think we're just kind of more conscious of um, where our money's going and getting a really, really good craft beer is just so much easier to do than getting a really, really good bottle of wine. Texas is number two when it comes to wine travel destinations in the U.S. behind Napa, California. So will this daunting trend impact the blooming Texas wine industry? Co-founder of Coleman Cellars in Stonewall, Texas, says he isn't worried since most Texas wineries operate on a much smaller local level. I actually feel really good because I don't aspire for us to be a 10 million case winery. As a 10,000 case winery, we're doing really good out there. According to the report, millennials like a sense of community or connection to local products. It's why Coleman sellers believe Texas wineries may have an advantage. Cobb compares Texas wineries to the craft brewery communities, saying he believes millennials are attracted to farm to table businesses and is hopeful that their local community has its benefits with the millennial consumer. As wine becomes increasingly local, we have this great opportunity to shed those old rituals that are almost mystic in, in their, their opacity and instead that we can create these new traditions. This story was really interesting for me, uh, especially being a millennial. I'm actually a wine drinker. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> I love wine. Um, so I thought it was fascinating, the point of millennials kind of, um, we are attracted to the craft breweries, right. you know, for that sense of community. It feels a little more laid back and casual. And that was the point that, um, Coleman Sellers was making about the Texas wineries. It still has that kind of same atmosphere where they're kind of getting rid of that quote unquote snobby or traditional, um, the traditions that come with, you know, going to a winery and wine tasting and stuff. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And also they made the point that millennials, they like local things. Yeah. Um, and so it's another way that they can market to millennials by supporting Texas wineries. Absolutely. Cool. You cool should story. always support local. Yes. KSAT.com? Says a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can read this story, of course, on KSAT.com. There you go. Got to plug social. 942, 50 degrees out. Already 50 degrees out. All right. What's going on with college football, Max? All right. So could there be a change in the college football playoff? We're going to explain and give you a timeline. Plus, we'll give you a sneak peek at today's episode of uh, Burgers. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Some wine, some burgers, yes. breakfast of champions. All 50 of it. 50 degrees out. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So we all know Saturdays are... Texas Eats. Texas Eats, right after the newscast. So today, David Elder pairing Shiner beers with some fantastic cheeseburgers at mm. one of our local and favorite burger shops. I want a cheeseburger. All right, well, here's a sneak peek. Our last burger that we're looking at today 
stuffed burger, but you're also combining it with your Mexican burger. Right. So it's like a stuffed Mexican burger. Right. <laughs> you know, you wanted to be impressed today, so we, we took our pepper steak, which is cheddar, onions, and jalapenos, which are inside two one-third patties. So that's a full two-third pounds. Wow. And on the stuffed burger regularly. And then we <laughs> put the guacamole and queso cheese, and on the side is our fresh fried mushrooms. Wow. For the last burger, I went a little crazy. I got a stuffed burger with jalapenos and onions on the inside, plus I got the Mexican burger on top of that, right? So you have the guacamole, you have the cheese on there, and the pico de gallo. All mixed together, it is an incredible bite. Seven days out of the week, that's the burger I'm getting. That burger needs to be cut. Mm. It's like one of those, like, you have to, or else if you bite it, it's gonna like go all, and you're not gonna be able to enjoy it properly. So you can just, I'm you just know, gonna dictate you your own bite. Keep going. <laughs> you know, keep on going. <laughs> I think, all of us yeah, hungry just here. Key, yeah, I, th I think we've established we're all hungry. We have four boxes of Girl Scout cookies <laughs> under the desk. I we know. got burgers. Starving. Hey, guys, you know, February is an interesting month, right? We can get all kinds of weather. You know, last year we got that winter storm, right? Uh, and about five years ago from today, we actually saw five tornadoes in the KSAT 12 viewing area. Uh, February 19th uh, in the evening through the early morning hours of the 20th, five tornadoes in our viewing area. The strongest one of which was an EF2 tornado that moved through uh, the Alamo Heights area near Linda Drive. Uh, and then, of course, we had an EF1 tornado on the northeast side of town, an EF0 zero tornado near Converse up in Comal County, and then seven miles south of Seguin. So five-year anniversary of that. I'm sure many of us remember that very well. It formed along a... Uh, straight line wind scenario that eventually had little bits of uh, tornadoes that did some damage. Thankfully, uh, no, no fatalities from those tornadoes, but that was five years ago. So yeah, February can be a volatile month, but today, beautiful outside. We're going to have very quiet weather this weekend. It is chilly though out there right now, but temperatures are rising 45 degrees at the airport, 44 at JBSA Randolph, 50 at Stinson, already 50 degrees. And a wider view here, it's 51 in Pleasanton. You'll also notice that across South Texas, there's quite a bit of cloud cover, mixture of mid and high level clouds. And today we'll have passing wispy cirrus clouds that move across uh, San Antonio, but it's in general going to be a gorgeous day. Winds will be a lot calmer than they have been the last couple of days. In fact, winds should be from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour throughout the day, and that's where they're at right now. So a gorgeous day on deck for us. Temperatures are going to rebound really nicely from where they were at this morning. Many of us were below freezing, but this afternoon we're going to have nice and comfortable conditions. 51 at 10. 59 at noon, close to 60 degrees at noon, and then in the afternoon, 65 for the high in San Antonio. Mid to upper 60s, safe bet anywhere around the KSAT 12 viewing area today. East winds, as I just mentioned, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And once the sun sets tonight at 626, get ready because it's going to get chilly. So grab that jacket with you. If you have any Saturday night plans, date night, or maybe you're going out to the rodeo, just know that it's going to get chilly, be in the 40s by about midnight. All right. It is dry out there. Chapstick weather, static electricity weather. You need some of that hand lotion. Dew points are in the 20s. That is very dry air. The first change to our weather that you are going to notice is that humidity will steadily be on the rise over the next 36 hours or so. So dry out there right now. Tomorrow, Sunday, dew points in the morning will be above freezing. That's why we're not going to have a morning freeze tomorrow morning. But you won't really feel the mugginess yet. Got to wait until Monday morning when we see that surge of Gulf moisture. By Monday morning, dew points will be near 60 degrees. That's when you can feel the humidity, and that's when you can see it, too. On Monday, we're going to have some areas of fog and drizzle in the morning hours. And then look at afternoon highs. On Monday and Tuesday, we will be in the 80s. And if you're like me, that sounds really nice. But
but that nice weather won't last for too long because we're going to get a stronger cold front that will move through Wednesday morning. That will knock our highs into the 40s on Wednesday and Thursday. So a big change. You're going to need to plan your wardrobe this this week. We're going to be in the 80s on Monday and Tuesday and the 40s by Wednesday and Thursday. As far as rain chances go, there is a chance for some isolated showers Wednesday and Thursday, 30% chance. But this is not going to be the drought busting forecast that we really need as far as rainfall is concerned. And I'd also like to mention on Wednesday and Thursday in the northern part of the hill country, there could be some sleet mixed in with that rain on Wednesday and Thursday. But keep in mind that temperatures are still going to be well above freezing, so no impacts expected if that does play out. What is the biggest thing you'll notice? The big temperature drop. Sarah Max, you ready? 80s to 40s. Let's do it. Phew. It's a lot of layering. What was, yes. the, what was the sound effect? Phew. Love it. Like, Woo. Good one. Really close. I appreciate it. <laughs> Time now, 951, 50 degrees out. All right, let's take a look outside with Trans Sky. Oh, it's, beautiful. it's a beautiful day looking like. Not a lot of traffic so far, what we're seeing out on Trans Guide. Well, right Ooh. there, we do have an incident at US 90 at General McMullen. Looks like some kind of accident. Hopefully, we can update on that later on the show. All right, so were you spurned by the college football playoff this year? Did your favorite team not make it? And were you saying, we need to expand this? Well, there's a big update we're going to explain in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Did your college football team not make the playoffs? Were they in the top 10 or even the top 12? Well, don't worry. According to ESPN, 10 FBS commissioners and Notre Dame athletics director, they announced that they could not come to a unanimous agreement about that possibility of a 12-team college football playoff format. That means that the current four-team format will remain in place at least for four years, the remaining four years of the contract, and it ends in 2025. So... If your team is a top 12 team, you just have to wait till 2026. They have approved that recommendation. All right, so here we go. From the field to the track. Officials of the Circuit of America is in Austin announcing that they have reached a five-year extension on the agreement with Formula One. The popularity of the sport obviously growing here in the United States as evident through attendance. The first year, 100,000 fans, and this year, 400 thousand fans. I'm not going to lie to you. I know a lot of friends and family. We got our own Sarah Spivey who have recently become more and more engulfed in this phenomenon. Have you watched any of the races? No, I, I just listened to Sarah Spivey for updates. So. Her, Garrett Berenger, there are uh, correspondents. Yes, our F1 sports correspondents. There we go. 956, 50 degrees out. Okay, is your child glued to their screen? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you why you may want to wait on giving your kids their first electronic device. All righty, uh, outside right now it's 51 degrees and uh, we're have a good pollen count today. You know, molds and mountain cedar and elm are all low. Graphics having a little difficulty loading, but there it is. Ooh. All right, as for today, climbing up to 65 degrees, pleasant outside, and looking ahead, we are going to be seeing, again, sorry about those graphics there, but just know that the weather is going to be really nice today, 65, and Max and Sarah will be in the 80s Monday and Tuesday before a strong cold front. Fantastic. I'm excited for the 80s. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. Texas Seed starts right now. Right now.